All right, Erie County fam, this is an update video for a video I originally published on July 13th, 2022. Uh, I believe only 26,000 people watched it, but James Freeman did cover it. And the story is I walked up on this Hamburg police officer, Kevin Sullivan, and asked him why he was inside Lackawanna running speed trap down inside Lackawanna out of jurisdiction because so many people have complained to me that they do this and they write tickets to Hamburg. So when I seen it happen, I stopped and, uh, well, I'll show you a little bit of it and then we'll get on with the update, the lawsuit and the charges he filed against me in retaliation and we'll go through it. Let's get into it, fam. Listen, y'all, these kids want to act up in school, want to go to school and embarrass you, want to make like they got no home training. So I told my son, don't go to school bathroom no more. I take care of you, son. I give you anything you want. I discipline you. But you're gonna bash me like this? You no, know, so now I'm gonna cut his hair. Oh, I got to ask you. Hey. Hey, do me a favor. Wait, guys. Now I saw you were in a restricted area. Now I want your right on the field. You're not getting it. Don't embarrass me. I told you, don't embarrass me. No. Aren't you in Lackawanna right now? Aren't you in Lackawanna right now? You're on this side of the bridge? Yeah, that's What are you doing? The sign's up here. The bridge, man. The bridge is right there. That's the that you're in Lackawanna, aren't you? I don't know, man. This looks like you're chilling in Lackawanna writing tickets in Lackawanna. What's your name? I've heard of, I've heard of, you know, Hamburg cops sitting in Lackawanna writing tickets in Lackawanna. The line's the bridge, isn't it not? The line is not the bridge, first of all. And second of all, I have jurisdiction for violations, moving violations, within 100 yards of the jurisdiction. So. Within 100 yards? Yep. Are you, uh, legal, are you illegally parked up there? I is popped up there. That's me. Okay. Yeah, I, I come down here to check out this activity right here. I don't. Well, you're going to get a ticket, so I need your license. I don't have it on me. You're not you're not in Lackawanna. What's that? You're in Lackawanna. You're parked illegally in Hamburg. You're in Lackawanna, bro. You're in Lackawanna. Okay. This is a complaint I've you had from a lot of citizens that come you have to your license? I just told you I do not. Okay. Well you need a license to operate that motor vehicle and you're parked in on a side. Go right at a ticket. You don't need my license for that. I do, I need the ID. You don't. Okay. You don't. What's your name? My name's Dan. Dan what? That's all you get. Well, I need to write you a ticket, so I need well, your go, full name. Go write a parking ticket. What's that? That's not a moving violation, is it? Come on, let's walk over your car. How can I help you? Let's walk over your car. You can get back in Hamburg, that's for sure. All right, well, I'm within 100 yards of the jurisdiction. This is 100 yards of the jurisdiction. Here you go, guys. This is Hamburg. I've been told to come down here and investigate. I've been told to come down here and investigate these guys because they be the they be they be in Lackawanna writing tickets, and I heard it. I've seen them close, but this is the first time I caught them right here, right-handed inside yeah, Lackawanna. I need ID. You're not getting it. I, well, you need I need ID in order to. I didn't do a crime. What's that? I, there's no crime. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to commit a crime for me to require you to give me ID. You don't have to commit a crime for me to require you to give me ID. Oh yeah. Station 25. Do you know the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution? I do. I know it very well. Good. Uh, how are you going to get my ID? It's right. Actually, it's not it's in my there. pocket. It's not in my pocket. It's not on me. Six on New York Kilo Romeo Echo eight zero six four. Can't get my ID. I didn't even. All right, Erie County fam. Notice how my truck is completely off of the road. It's definitely not on the road. It's on the other side of the white line. That's important in the update here. Let's go ahead and get to where he shoves me over my trailer hitch. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you touching me for, Joe? That's the first time Sullivan goes hands-on and shoves me over my trailer hitch after I just got done launching my boat on my way to work and uh, shut the camera off and the jolting somehow. But when I turn it back on, the next police officer is here from the village of Blaisdell, which is kind of odd that they wouldn't call Lackawanna, please, considering we were in Lackawanna. So where's your ID? Where's your ID? I'm not giving you ID. Well, you need to give me ID. For what? What crime did you suspect me of? Suspect me of what? 
This, this uh, cop is sitting inside the lack of wine. I come down here and take a video of him. Now he wants to ID me. He wants to ID me. See, a lack of wine starts at that bridge. I see the sign there, but you're still on the other side of it, writing tickets coming from Lackawanna. How, you're yeah. writing people tickets this way? I didn't write any tickets. You're yet. writing tickets this way? You're the first what are you I'm doing writing. there? You're the first ticket I'm going to You're going to make mainstream for this one. That's fine. You can, I have no problem with you filming me. My name's Kevin Sullivan. My badge so I'm being detained? Assistant. What's that? Yeah, you're What crime am I being detained for? Keep what, your hands out of your pockets. What, 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 what crime am I being just Quit coming at me, bro. Keep your hands out of your pockets. And I still need ID because I'm just going to What crime have I, what crime do you suspect me of? I'm not alleging Well, then you have an illegal crime. detention here. Nope. I don't need a, a crime to detain you. I can detain you for a violation, which you're walking in the road illegally. I'm walking in the road yeah, illegally, you catching you in, inside Lackawanna. You. Inside Lackawanna. I'll tell you what. I got ID right here. What's it? In that Erie County fam is the second time Sullivan went hands-on. And this time, the dumb cop put me in handcuffs for a parking ticket which is a complete violation of my rights, and we ended up filing a lawsuit over it. But I can't show you the handcuffing because YouTube would consider that a violation of policy and would turn the video 18 plus and not allow it to be monetized. And then the video would get no footage like it did the first time when I showed the video and it only got 26,000 views. Now, let's go ahead and see what Sullivan had to say about putting the handcuffs on me. If you want to see the whole unedited video, I will link it in the description. You may see it there, but we're just going to highlight some of the things and give an update on this situation. What's that? This is an illegal detention. No, I already told you. What's the vehicle in traffic law within 100 yards of my time? Writing tickets in Lackawanna. What's your name? That's beautiful. What's your name? My name is Dan. Dan what? Wait, one more. What's your last name? What crime do you suspect me? You haven't told me a crime. I don't need a crime. After being handcuffed for over five minutes, he got a hold of his supervisor and tried to impound my truck and bring me in. But the supervisor told him to let me go when they found out who I was. And let's get into that. Sir, I don't have a thing on me. Is it all right if I check? If I, if, listen, I don't consent to any unlawful searches and seizures. You can do what you have the lawful authority to do. What you I'm do asking, not have listen, any lawful here's, consent here's to search wanna, me what, or my truck. Here's what I want to do. I want to let you out of handcuffs. All right? Well, but, because, which you can legally do. Fact, right. Because of the fact that you're so hostile with me, and I don't know you. I've never met you before. Well, then right? hostile until you guys put your hands on me. Because you started going into your car. You right? asked for ID. I, asked I right said, all right, said, I'll no. get you the ID. I said it, and I want it's all on video, bro. Okay, well, we can look at the video. I didn't either. You, either I didn't hear you say it, or you didn't say. It. Either way, I did not know you were going into your car to get ID. All right. All right. Will you please take me out of these handcuffs? Listen. Right now. So what I'm, what I'm, I'm asking you to do, do, what I'm asking you to do, is I would like to make sure that you don't have any weapons in your pockets. There's no weapons. Okay. If I can check that, then I'll let you out of handcuffs. Go ahead. Is that all right? Okay. You're gonna get cited for really? parking up on the curb. That's it. Oh, that's great. Okay. That's great. You're and you're in. Now you're in the town of Hamburg. If you look, that's where the city of Lackawanna starts. No, right? we know where the GSA maps stay, and it's the bridge okay. by crime. We'll see. We also have, we got I, I also have within 500 yards, or I'm sorry, uh, 100 yards of the, can you separate your feet? Oh, we're going to definitely check up on that. Yeah, you, it's the vehicle and traffic law. I can write violations anywhere within 100 yards of the line for the time. All right? All right, now I'll take you out of handcuffs. Stay out of your car, okay? If you want an idea, I'll get it for you. Look, where you're is your it? It's on the center of council. I'll look you up. I'll just, do not open I'll this just door. Don't That's open the door. Gonna, there is I'm a, not going to look in there. There's yeah, a cat on the dash. Okay. I'm not going to go through your car at all, all right? I'm going to cite you for parking up in the middle of the... the you're still in traffic, all right? That's all you're going to get. And that's all I ever cared about. But when you you don't care around, about me in traffic. Do you care about getting caught in last This is a retaliation care, ticket. I already told you. Tell me, that, tell me this is not a retaliation ticket. Go ahead. Tell, tell me in the Erie County family this is a re not a retaliation ticket. Oh, yeah. He doesn't know what a retaliation ticket is, guys. I told you the reason I needed your ID to begin with is because you were walking in traffic. He doesn't know. What, can I get my ID now? What's it? You want me, it's right no, on the center council. What do you think I'm going to do? I don't know. I don't know you. I've never met you before. All right? All I know is that you came up to me and you're being confrontational with me for no reason. So how do I know I just you're told you. There I asked you there. what you were doing in there. You come out here to retaliate. No. This is retaliation. Not, no, I came up here to All right, if it's not retaliation, then let me roll. Huh? If it's not retaliation, then oh, let me roll. I'm getting excited because, excited because so I approached you on. over there, and now you're pissed. Are you going to get caught in Lackawanna writing tickets? That's exactly what it is. Am I still being detained? Yes, you are. Just not in the handcuffs. So hang out with my partner. I want to write you a ticket. This is a retaliation ticket, guys. 
Alright man, get one citation for 1201A of the vehicle and traffic law. Alright, we're not running partly normal because of COVID, so just mail it in, plead guilty or not guilty by mail. Still because of COVID, huh? Yeah, I, trust me. I Government wish we convenience. I wish we were still running it like normal, uh, or we started running it like normal. Here's the thing, okay? In the future, if you want to come up and talk to me or any other officer, that's fine, alright? The first thing the first thing that threw me off a little bit, you just sneak up on me, alright? Just walking up on my blind spot. So that just throws me off a little bit, alright? Then you start contending that I'm not doing my job or saying I'm doing things improper. Which Bro, I'm you're in lack of wine or facing that way. Right. The so people I'm, are going to see this. You know, it, what I, what I, my opinion isn't going to matter so much. It's when 50,000 people watch you write yeah, your tickets in lack of wine. That's fine. Listen, you're going to have to deal with that. Yet. You're the first to get a road today. Right. Right. Well, that's first great. All, but you did it in lack. Is it written to Lackawanna? As my Why didn't you write it to Lackawanna? What's that? Why didn't you write it to Lackawanna? Because we're on this side of the line. Yeah, but I walked on the street over there. I'm on a public sidewalk in Hamburg. No, Hamburg's got a public sidewalk all the way here. Down the road from that. All right, all right. Regardless, okay, here's what I'm saying. If you want to have a discussion with me about the, the propriety of the practices... No, I just want to video fine. record no, that. That's, that's shady. Fine. And I have no problem with that. That's Bro, that's shady is what it is. Okay, well, if you, we can disagree on that. All right, what I'm saying in the future is, right, don't just sneak up on a cop and be confrontational with them, all right? Have you, I don't know if you watched the news about it lately, but cops get killed, like, every day. By every right day, guys. Yeah, literally, all right? People are getting shot. Cops are getting shot. People how many cops, cops were shot? I, since you've been a cop, how many how many cops have been shot on a traffic stop or pulled a gun on a traffic stop in Hamburg here? In Hamburg? Yeah, in your Thankfully, career. How many times? Thankfully none, not in Hamburg. Boom. Boom, guys. He's so time. scared. Okay. In Hamburg, New York. Pampered way, Hamburg, way, pretty I much. Don't care. I don't mind you filming. I don't mind you talking to me. I don't mind having a conversation with you. All right, but problem is when you start digging in pockets all right i asked you for your id you refused and then you start digging your pockets right and i didn't dig in my pocket i set my hand in my pocket that is not illegal okay. i know i never you guys said if you guys being, are going to be scared little that. girls you need to find a new job you're honestly for that okay the uh, you can't is, cite me for putting my hand wasn't. in my pocket i know it's not illegal i never said it was right the problem is that when you come up to me in a confrontational manner and i don't know who you are right bro I you walked past too. me to go to my car to start retaliating and get license plate numbers because no, you didn't to, like I how I approached you is what happened. I have to tell and the then I'm, I'm when right. you did that, I continued to your car. That wasn't approaching you. That wasn't aggressive no, no, towards you. When you first came up to me. Yeah. You just walked That's what I'm talking about. When you walked away to go retaliate and get my plates and find out who I am because you, you weren't happy with what I, I did to you. What I did to you was perfectly legal. you're getting cited for the thing I asked you for your ID for. It's perfectly legal to walk up on a police officer and take a look at what they're doing. It's constitutionally protected activity. That's fine. You can. I'm telling you, it throws us off a little bit. So if you're going to do that, and then also yeah, it throws you guys off and start retaliating. Oh, you know why you wrote that ticket? I'm going to tell you why I wrote that ticket. It's called ego. No, because you. You guys need to get those in check. Because if you guys had those I'm egos in check, you know, if you guys had those egos in check, I'm also we wouldn't have a problem. There would be no dissonance between police and, and okay. the public. All right. All right and I don't want to hear you cops explain why you wrote a ticket and how that's that's you know you you did public safety or something. My truck ain't in the road. I came over here. If I was retaliating, I'd write you every ticket. Tell me. In the Erie County family, is a re not a retaliation ticket. Oh, yeah, and he doesn't know what a retaliation ticket is, guys. He came over here. If I was retaliating, I'd write you every ticket I could, including walking in the roadway legally, which he did. And I'm not. I'm nah, not advising you. That nah, not we didn't walk in the walk road. In. We didn't walk in the road. After this incident, the Hamburg PD reached out to me to dismiss this ticket that they wrote if I was to come there and talk to them. So the next clip shows that I went there to talk to them, but when they showed up with a camera to talk to them, they refused to speak to me because I was on camera. And I don't know what they thought that I wasn't going to be recording, but after they refused to speak to me, I served them up a lawsuit for this guy putting me in handcuffs. Dan? Yeah. How are you? Pretty good. You need to take the phone. We're not recording nothing inside here. No? No. No recording? No. All right, well, if we're not recording, I don't know what we're going to do. I'm not sure. Well, we're going to discuss a lot of the questions or concerns from the other day. Wait, we can't record it? No. Mm. I, I don't do anything on camera with news outlets, nothing. All right, well, I guess I'm going to not talk about it if we can't record. Okay. I can't go with yeah. recording, but... Uh, okay. In that case, I do have... Uh, okay. To right. serve the serve the town. Sorry, you couldn't sit down and talk. No, I'm not more welcome to sit down and talk, but you know, it's not necessarily about me or I'm not here to talk. It's okay. more, more or less Erie about the Erie County fam that would be the one to, to talk. You know what I mean? Okay. No, no accountability. There you go. They call me down here to talk about it, but they won't do it on camera. Interesting. Well, we'll just serve them with the papers, I guess, and that's about it. All right, Erie County fam, let's go ahead and get to the update. The new information out is that um, the 
parking ticket that they said they were going to dismiss if I came in and spoke with them. Um, they wouldn't do it on camera, um, which, you know, just goes to show no accountability, no transparency in the government, especially in the Hamburg Police Department. And this is going to tie into the rest of the video because the rest of the video is about some new developments going on in Hamburg, New York. And we're going to get into that. But first bit of update is that we took this traffic ticket that he wrote me for parking ticket up on the curb past the white line as you guys remember seeing in that video when i pointed it out and um both hamburg judges recused themselves from the parking ticket and it ended up getting moved to the the town of boston which is the next town over for the parking ticket and along the way the boston town court sent me a um dismissal for that ticket and then months and months and months later, the system, whether it was the DA's office or the Hamburg police or wherever it was, found out that they gave me a letter for dismissal. And they said, oh, no, no, we can't dismiss that. So what they did is they brought me into court and set it up straight up for trial. There was no plea bargains or nothing. Obviously, uh, most of the people I went to court that day were for, you know, inspections and that, and they were all getting one parking ticket, two parking tickets, and I was there for a parking ticket. So we ended up taking this parking ticket to trial, and we sat in a trial, and, and Sullivan sat on the bench, and he cried, Officer Safety. Have you, I don't know if you watched the news about it lately, but Tosky killed like every day. By every day, room. guys. Yeah, literally. And, and how pathetic he was to cry officer safety. He lied through his teeth on the stand trying to get a guilty verdict. And lo and behold, what happened after an hour and a half trial on a parking ticket, um, I had to hire an attorney, attorney Nick Texado, one of the best attorneys in, in, in Western New York. If you guys need an attorney, this guy is fire. He is on key. And after an hour and a half trial for a parking ticket, um, I was giving a verdict of not guilty. So I was not guilty for illegal parking. So the update on the parking ticket, it was found not guilty um, for illegal parking. The way my truck was parked, they put the video up. The prosecutor did their best job to prosecute me for an illegal parking ticket. And it was found not guilty. You can see right on the screen here, this is the not guilty verdict. Are you, uh, legal? Are you legally parked up there? I is popped up there. That's me. Okay. Yeah, I, I come down here to check license? out this activity right here. I want to. You parked illegally in Hamburg. It was found not guilty. You can see right on the screen here, this is the not guilty verdict from Honorable Deborah K. Bender. And uh, that is the update on that. Now, the lawsuit that I served in that office there, I served him a lawsuit for um, illegally handcuffing me on a parking ticket, nonetheless, which is still illegal. But now the fact that they didn't even have a lawful parking ticket to handcuff me for, um, it's going to be a much stronger case. So we filed that in a New York State um, Supreme Court against the Hamburg PD um, against Sullivan, the two officers, um, I believe um, the village of Blaisdell was in there, the Blaisdell police officer, the Blaisdell themselves, the Hamburg themselves. We, we served up at least seven lawsuits, individually suing everybody involved. And my attorney, Brittany Penberg, they put that one out. And uh, it went to the New York State Supreme Court. The New York State Supreme Court kicked it out and sent it up to federal court. Now it is in the federal court system. And since the parking ticket was dismissed, which was their only viable means of saying that I was um, there in the first place to even have any means to um, violate you know, my fourth amendment rights, by putting me in handcuffs for a parking ticket, which is already ridiculous. So now that's up into the, the federal court and we are waiting to find out what's going to happen with that. They haven't come to me with no settlement or nothing. They haven't got no decisions or no, nothing yet is slow rolling in federal court. But the parking ticket that he wrote me was found not guilty after an hour and a half trial so that's the update and the update on what's going on with the lawsuit that i served them but it, this brings up some more interesting things in hamburg new york most recently there was a shooting where the hamburg police officer shot a 36 year old woman in a house they shot her twice in the legs and once in the chest and killed her so let's go ahead and get to the press 
briefing about that. And then I want to make a few points and bring up some stuff about the Hamburg Police Department and their lack of accountability and their refusal to put body cameras on these officers, the refusal to do anything of that nature. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at some of the press conference with this. They shot this lady dead because she waved a um, pen light at them vigorously. So they got scared just like Sullivan. And uh, I'll show you a few clips from that. And then um, they, you know, just goes to show these Hamburg police officers are so scared of the public. It's And they must violate people to the point where they have to be this scared. It brings a lot of questions into accountability. Like the officer wouldn't go in the back room and speak to me on camera about the whole situation. And, you know, like, they refuse to put body cameras on. Then they expect us to believe their word on what happened that day. And then they shoot a lady dead who was waving a pen light at them um, in a slashing motion. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of that footage. Thank you all for coming out today. Uh, Friday, I know we provided you with some limited information. And so today we want to provide you with what we know so far and uh, give you an overview of the events of Friday, February 2nd. So the initial incident on Willett Road at 1039 hours, the Town of Hamburg Police Dispatch receives the initial call from a resident on Willett Road. The call reports that a female has entered his home and is acting irrationally. The caller then reports to dispatch that he is physically fighting to remove her from his house. The caller then reports he managed to physically remove the female and that she is outside banging on his doors and windows and then he believes she may have entered his shed. She is described as a black or Hispanic female, mid-30s, wearing a blue t-shirt and jeans and is barefoot. The first officer arrives and is informed by the caller that the female is out of her mind, acting crazy, and possibly on something. The second officer arrives at Willett Road and the lock on the shed is found to be broken. The officers search the shed, but no one is inside. So they are able to identify some footprints in the snow and they start to track the female on foot. Now the, fem the footprints lead to a backyard where there's a truck, she enters the truck and then leaves and then continues on to where she crosses an approximate three foot deep creek and then continues. Two officers continue to follow the footprints which lead to the other side of the creek and the third officer checks McKinley Parkway and Willett Road for her. Officers continue to track the footprints which are now leading to the rear of a blue home on McKinley Parkway. That home is 3043 McKinley Parkway. Officers transmit their location. They inform the patrol lieutenant that the footprints lead to the rear door and that that door is open. The patrol lieutenant directs them to make entry to ensure the well-being of any residents in the home and to attempt to locate that female. Now before the officers make entry, they loudly and repeatedly announce their presence by yelling, Town of Hamburg Police, we are entering the house. If you are here, show yourself and make yourself known. Initially, two officers enter the house. The third officer is positioned on the opposite exterior side in case someone exits. As officers enter the home, they observe that the floor is wet. The house appears to have been ransacked with items strewn about, drawers were open, items were all over the counter and floor. Two officers proceed downstairs into the basement. Now the entire interior of the residence is dark and dimly lit. They proceed to search the rest of the house. During the search, they enter a short, narrow hallway with a closed door leading to a bathroom. One officer enters the bathroom while the second provides cover. Upon entry, the shower curtains closed. The officer opens the shower curtain and observes a female who is naked and attempting to cut herself with a knife. Both officers retreat to the threshold of the door 
and verbally give her commands to drop the knife. This is who they encounter in that bathroom. Lisa L. Haight, 36 years old and lives in Jamestown, New York. And Ms. Haight's previous police contacts include complaints for weapons offenses and an extensive drug history. It was later learned, so the officers didn't know this information, it was later learned that Ms. Haight committed a serious stabbing assault on the nearby New York State Thruway shortly before this incident occurred. Back to our diagram. So again, the New York State Thruway is running here. So she was a passenger in a private transport van. That van was en route to a methadone clinic in Buffalo when the stabbing assault occurred. So we believe that the vehicle probably stopped in this general area where that blue dot is. Ms. Haight attacked a fellow passenger by stabbing her repeatedly in the head, face, and shoulder, resulting in serious, in serious injuries. I, I can honestly tell you, I have seen the photos of that victim, and they are horrific. She then fled the stabbing scene on foot toward McKinley and Willett, and then the van continued on with the victim to Mercy Hospital. So now we're back in the bathroom. So as officers are making initial contact with Ms. Haight, the perimeter officer enters the house to assist. Officers continue to make verbal attempts to have Ms. Haight drop the knife she was holding. Officers use de-escalation techniques in an attempt to get her to comply. So de-escalation is just a general term, but what <coughs> techniques did they use? They lowered their voices, softer tone, they asked her what her name was. They tried to uh, get her to talk to them, get her to talk to them, and continued with non-threatening conversation in attempt to get her to drop that knife. Ms. Haight is eventually persuaded to drop the knife and get out of the tub. The officers guided her verbally to the threshold of the hallway with the intent to safely take her into custody. So using appropriate arrest tactics, two officers attempt to take her into physical custody using handcuffs. During the attempt to secure Ms. Haight, she suddenly resisted violently and attempted to get back into the bathroom. She then lunged forward and downward into the hallway and grabbed an object. As the officers were struggling to control Ms. Haight, she made stabbing and slashing movements with the object in her hand against them. This included direct stabbing motions which struck one officer in the leg and a slashing motion near and across his face. All three officers believed Ms. Haight was holding a knife. One officer fired his department issued sidearm to stop what all three believed to be a knife attack. So this component of the encounter with Ms. Haight took place within seconds in very tight quarters, in a narrow hallway, with poor lighting conditions. It was later observed that multiple electrical breakers had been switched off in the basement. We believe Ms. Haight was responsible for turning off those breakers. In the other crime scene on Willett Road, a breaker box was tampered with on the outside of the residence, we also believe Ms. Haight was responsible for that. Immediate first aid efforts by our officers at the scene. So officers immediately begin administering first aid. One officer immediately used nearby available items in the house to apply direct pressure to control bleeding. Another officer retrieved a trauma medical bag from a police car. We have photos up there. We also have the actual bag here. And in those bags are advanced first aid supplies. Additional first aid. One of the officers who treated Ms. Haight at the scene is an experienced EMS provider. He previously worked as an EMT and had extensive training as a United States Army combat medic. 
During the course of first aid efforts, a chest seal was applied to Ms. Haight's single chest wound. Before the arrival of the volunteer fire company and EMS responders, CPR was con conducted by the officers at the scene. Newton Abbott Volunteer Fire Company arrived on scene and took over advanced EMS care. AMR Ambulance and Woodlawn Volunteer Fire Company also came to the scene and assisted. So here is key evidence. The object held by Ms. Haight when she made the stabbing motion against the officers was secured as evidence and determined to be a pen-like utility light. Now, given the totality of the circumstances and how quickly the situation escalated, all three officers believed that Ms. Haight was attempting to cut them with what they believed to be a knife. Think about it, what we said, a stabbing motion, and then she attempts to get up, and then with a slashing motion towards the officer's face. From what it is known so far, it appears the responding officers followed the procedures and use of force policy of the town of Hamburg Police Department as this incident unfolded. The involved officers utilized appropriate arrest methods and attempted to de-escalate the situation consistent with departmental procedures. This arrest attempt went from Ms. Haight being momentarily compliant to what appeared to the officers to be a life-threatening confrontation in a matter of seconds. By statute, the Attorney General's Office will formally review this police use of deadly physical force. From what the Town of Hamburg Police Department has determined so far, it appears that the use of deadly force by these responding officers was justified. The Town of Hamburg Police Department's review of this critical incident is ongoing. This is a serious matter, and the department is treating it as such. Additional information regarding this incident will be made available as it is developed. So I will take a few questions. Mr. You, McKinley? You, you said it was, are you identifying the officer who was involved in the shooting? Not today. Why I, not? Uh, first and foremost, their well-being is my primary attention, and I think providing that information would not contribute to that. I can tell you that the officer is a six-year veteran of the department, and eventually we will release that name when appropriate. Yes. Okay. Uh, you, you talked about what happened in a matter of seconds. You said it was dark. When cops go into a house like that, it's kind of dark. Did they have any kind of lighting? Did yes. A chest light, a headlight, yes. or they, something? They have lights um, with them, flashlights, that they use. Were they using the flashlights? They did. They were using their, their lights, yes. So it was too, still too dark to make out what the heck she was holding? I wasn't there. And... I would say yes. Are all three Go ahead. officers on administrative leave? Yes. Yes, they are. Okay. And that is not a, a punitive measure by any means. That's a standard procedure, and they will return when they're ready. Is there any video evidence, and why does the department not have body cameras? Okay, there is no uh, video evidence. We do not have body cameras. There's no private uh, video either. As far as body cameras in the town of Hanover Police Department, we have secured a grant for them. The town board allocated money in our 2024 budget for body cameras, so we are in the process of creating a policy, uh, looking at things, how they would work procedurally. Uh, there's union issues, but I am confident that in 2024, we will have body cameras. How the issue was with not being able to get body cameras? Is it just a funding issue? No, I, not that it's not an issue, it's just, this is how long it is taking us to get the grant and then to have the money in, in the budget and then to find a vendor and get that all going just takes a little bit of time. When did that process start? At the, the end of 2023, we were looking at that. So in 2021, you came up with a plan saying that you were going to buy body cameras, still don't have body cameras. 
how would body cameras help or hurt your situation in this case? Because uh, the attorney representing the officer told us last night that the body cameras would help your situation. I, I would agree with that. I mean, most times uh, we have to look at body camera, well, uh, agencies have to look at body camera footage, whether it's a complaint or an officer-involved shooting. I think uh, almost 99% of the time the officer is doing the right thing. Uh, almost 99% of the time the officer is doing the right thing. How many shots were fired? Three rounds were fired. We found uh, three shell casings. And that she was only shot once? No, Just once in the chest. The other two rounds entered uh, each leg. And it was the same officer's firearm that shot officer? One officer fired, correct. I'll take one more question. Do you recall the last time there was an officer involved shooting in the town? Uh, I don't remember the date. There was one. It was, uh, it was a while ago. Okay. We're good? Thank you. Thank you very much for coming out. All right, Erie County fam. I just wanted to start out by saying something that the chief of police himself said. This is a serious matter. This is a serious matter, and the department is treating it as such. The problem that I have here, and the biggest problem I have here, is the cops. They lie nonstop. We, we watch video after video of cops lying through their teeth consistently. So when this chief says it's a serious matter, how are we supposed to take police serious nowadays? All right. Hamburg police, as you see in the statistically speaking, started their grant in 2001. It is now 2004, three years to figure out how to get body cameras on these guys. They... There's no plan to get body cameras. They don't want body cameras because they couldn't cop explain their way out of things anymore. All right, I seen a lot of cop explaining um, in this in this short press briefing, um, and it is a serious matter. Now, how are we supposed to take these guys serious when they lie nonstop? Um, you seen the um, captain or lieutenant who brought me in who wouldn't talk on camera, no recording. Where is the transparency in the police department? How are we supposed to believe these guys? I mean, you've seen the video footage of him saying, hey. Wait, we can't record it? No. Mm -hmm. I, I don't do anything on camera with news outlets, nothing. All right. Well, I guess I'm going to not talk about it if we can't record. Okay. If we can't go with recording. But, uh, Sorry here. you couldn't sit down and talk. Well, I'm not more than welcome to sit down and talk, but, you know, it's not, not necessarily about me or I'm not here to talk. It's okay. more, more or less Erie about Hamburg. the Erie County fam that would be the one to talk, you know what I mean? Okay. No, no accountability. Now, the other instance that I want to bring up here is the fact that my interaction with Sullivan there. When I walked up on him, what is the first thing we seen him do? He grabbed his gun. Check it out. As I walk up, first thing he does... Grabs his gun, unholsters it, takes the clip out. He's got it in his hand. I'm just walking up to him. He's, you know, he relatches. He's going to put it in gear. Look at it. Ready? Here we go. He's going to grab his gun again. He's got his hand on his gun again. He doesn't take his hand off the gun the entire time. As I'm just talking to him, bringing it up to his cell phone. As even I'm walking away, he's got his hand on his gun. Non-stop. He had his hand on his gun. He unclipped it. He put his hand on his gun. He couldn't keep his hand off his gun. And these cops talk about cops get shot every single day. Have you, I don't know if you watched the news about it lately, but cops get killed like every day. By every right day, guys. Yeah, literally. Let's go through some statistic when it comes to police versus citizens, all right? 15% of civilians who have interactions legal authorized legal interactions where you know a, a person did something wrong and the cops have a legal reason to be there 15 percent of the time these people end up injured from use of force that makes for 250,000 people statistically speaking gets hurt by police officers every year while they're being apprehended all right in use of force all right now statistically speaking how many gets shot 600 a year get shot by police officers, all right? Now, you're asking, like Sullivan says, cops get killed all the time. How many people were killed by... 
how many police officers were killed in the line of duty. In, in 2022, 60 officers were killed by gunfire in the year 2022. Therefore, 60 versus 600 a year killed by a police officer, you're much more likely to get killed by a police officer than a police officer is to get killed by a citizen. So I don't know where they go off getting this idea that they have the most dangerous job. Shit, they're not even in the top 10 most dangerous job, all right? A pizza delivery man or a Amazon delivery man has a much more dangerous job than a police officer, all right? So my problem here in this serious, and it is a serious situation, you know, somebody lost their life. They talk about, you know, like, I, I see on the screen the pen light, the major key evidence in the pen light. They show a pen light. Why did we not see the knife she had in the bathtub that they claimed that she had? Why was that not a picture on the screen? That, that, that should have been a key piece of evidence. They shot the lady when she was holding a pen light. Now, just think, if I walked up on Sullivan and I had a pen light on me, shit, I might be dead, fam. I mean, if that's all it takes. I mean, you see Sullivan freak out when I when I reached, when I set my hand in my pocket. Check it out. What crime am I being detained for? Keep your hands out of your pockets. What, 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 what crime am I being just Quit coming at me, bro. Keep your hands out of your pockets. And now, just imagine if I had a pen light in my pocket, would I be here right now? And, you know, as far as transparency and lying to us, I think it's public record for us to know which officer, you know, pulled his gun and shot. I don't know why this chief seems to think that he needs to protect this person. I mean, they chose this job. They chose to, you know, uphold that right and defend the people. And if pulling a service weapon is something they signed up to do, I don't understand why the chief here feels the need to... Um, not give out the name like he's protecting somebody we're, we're gonna figure it out eventually i mean he's eventually gonna have to say it's gonna be in reports and you know i see an awful lot of cops splitting in this video you guys let me know what you think in the comments section what you guys think um you know what how are we supposed to take police serious how are we supposed to believe when they say when they will not they will not stop lying to the people they lie nonstop. It's almost like you could tell when a cop's lying because his lips are moving. It sounds like a joke, but is it funny in this situation? Is it a joke, Hamburg PD? Is it a joke now that you expect the public to take you serious in this serious matter when you will not stop lying to the people? When you do dirty stuff like sitting inside Lackawanna, running speed traps for Hamburg. I mean... I'm going to be honest, I haven't seen a cop there since that day when I asked Sullivan what he was doing there. So I'm, I'm hoping that they, you know, take heed in their image that they produce because I think it's important. In, in this day here, it's very important because these people, they need to be believed. I mean, how are we supposed to expect to believe the law enforcement, though? Like, I'm having a hard time talking about, oh, it was dark and, and you know... They, they were in the bathtub. She was trying to cut herself. And also, all we have is a picture of a flashlight. There was no picture of the knife that she allegedly had. Um, they got this woman out of the bathtub, and then they let her back in the bathroom. I mean, I just, the whole thing seems fishy to me. Um, I'm having a real hard time believing anything that comes out of these cops' mouths nowadays. And it's sad. I mean, this platform, in a sense, was here to help. In a way, they could bridge that gap. They could bring the people back together. But they cannot stop lying. They're, they're, they're chronic paid liars. And, and if they're going to keep lying to the public, then they're going to have a press conference that looks shifty like this one. I mean, I can't wait to see what you guys have to say in the comment section about this press briefing and what you guys think of the situation with this woman being shot to death by police officers for having a pen light because she was making a slashing motion towards the police. A red pen light I, doesn't look like a knife to me. All right, If I got hit with that in the moment, I would think I would know if it was a knife or not. I mean, I just find it hard to believe that they did any type of de-escalation personally because I all I see when cops is it's like they, they're hammers and everything's a nail. It's disgusting. And the fact that they won't stop lying, I don't know, guys. You guys hit up the comments section. 
I would love to hear all your input of what you guys think of this whole situation. If you believe a word this chief said, um, and what do you guys think about them applying for body cameras in 2001, almost four years going now, and they still haven't got body cameras on them. In 2001, 90% of police departments had body cameras already. I mean, body cameras have been around for a very long time. There's no, no good explanation or reason why this department shouldn't have had body cameras back in 2022. There, there is none. There's grants out there. They can get these things for free. It doesn't cost, it doesn't cost the department anything out of their budget. They could get it for free, but they drag their feet. And now they're in this situation where they got this attorney like, oh, we wish we had the body cameras. Huh. Imagine what we would have seen if they had the body cameras because we would have had video evidence. It, it's 2024. How do we not have body cameras and not have body evidence of this? It, it's it's disgusting, fam. Let me l know what you guys think in the comment section. And I can't wait to read it. Um, disgusting. So I'll keep you guys updated. Anything new that I find out about this situation, I'll see you guys in the comment section. Auditing or County, I'm out. How many cops were shot? I, since you've been a cop, how many how many cops have been shot on a traffic stop or pulled a gun on a traffic stop in Hamburg here? In Hamburg? Yeah, in your career, how many times? Actually, none, not in Hamburg. Boom, boom, guys. He's so time. scared. Okay. In Hamburg, New York, pampered way, Hamburg, way, pretty much. I don't care. I watch the news. A lot of people every day. Every day, guys. You guys are going to be scared little that. girls. You need to find a new job, You're honestly. For that. We live in a society now where people want to recall how they discipline their child. The people that might get mad with this video is the people that probably already embarrassed their child. You can't you can discipline your child in their room. Take something away from them. If they act up, well, I'm like, son, you can't play the game. You pull the constitution out of your pockets out here. Like that was supposed to prove something. First Amendment, freedom of the press. <laughs> Your name is not Dan Erie County. Um, this isn't Erie County. Yeah. Sure it is. I'm here is Dan Erie County. Legitimate? Maybe. Official? No.